to make here we are going to take an earlier. I'm going to open it up to the floor. We haven't got mics, but I am going to paraphrase as well as I can mm -hmm. to anyone who's anything they want to add, any questions they want to say. And I'm going to have a little look online here too. So my to Ian Rod, uh Space Levace Carsey Mac. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Be shy. Be shy. <laughs> Eat on. <laughs> Average in a reach. I see I see a hand being pointed to me, it's quite hard to see from here. Okay. Yeah. Just scratch your back here. Um, why why is there such a, a fear so you want to mention the word fear uh, in your talking? So where does that fear come from? Why does so just to paraphrase that for those at home listening, so Kuru Kesha in the Shaqeen Fatah will unlock the shot on why is there this fear, what, you know, fear has been mentioned a few times tonight, from the very beginning to now, um, w the question that was asked, where has this fear come from, why is it here, we might ask for each of your opinions, Tosa Klaatse, Enya, Kerry Captain too. Um, yeah, I, I think it comes down to the basic fact that it's, for most Irish people, speaking Irish is a second language. And there are, you know, so uh, anyone who has experience of that knows what it's like when you have to try to communicate with people and you don't know if you're going to be understood or get your point across or make any sense or humiliate yourself or, you know, just have a very negative experience. Um, and then, so I think it's, it's that basic fear and then but I don't know, I think there's something about Irish humility. We don't deal with it very well. Um, and so it's just kind of, it's emphasised in Ireland for whatever reason. Oscar? Don't you think that you have a lot of people who have done a lot of people who have done a Most people don't like to not be good at something or to fail at something. I was down to a treasure in and that is accentuated when you think that somehow instinctively you should be good at it. It's called the Irish language, and we are Irish. So therefore, to not be good at it is a bit challenging. Like, and, okay. it's, and, 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 and I think that there's a bit of cognitive dissonance going on there, where people go, this is something that I should probably be good at. So therefore, if I'm not immediately good at it, then there's this probably something happening. wrong with it. Or there's, it's, it's, not, it's not me, it's it, and, and, and whatever else. So it's, it's somewhere in that feeling. Uh, I, I, th I think it's just an accentuation of that feeling of not being good at something that you feel that maybe you should be. Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. Um, and I think that it's kind of twofold. I think the humility, like you mentioned, Anya, um, is definitely a huge thing. It's like when you say to somebody in Ireland, oh, I love your skirt, where'd you get it? Oh, it's pennies. Like, you know, I, I, yeah. you just say pennies, you say oh, pennies. Oh, pennies. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't spend that much money on it, it's not that great. <laughs> uh, you know, it's this weird sort of humility thing. Um, but I also think there's this kind of, uh, rightly or wrongly, I think it's probably wrongly, this assumption that Gael Gore, you're kind of, and I don't particularly like that word, but people who speak Irish, are out to kind of laugh at you, that they're going to point, ah, look at him, he got his tish again, and looked wrong, ah, what a big eat. Like, yeah. like, I don't know anyone who does that, but I think there's that fear that somebody will point and laugh. And again, like, if you're learning, I don't know, French or something, I don't, I don't know if French people do that, but that'd be really weird if they did. So <laughs> I think there's this assumption that people are going to, like, laugh at you if you get something wrong. Again, because you probably, you should know what it's the Irish language. Like, I don't know if it's if it's there. If anyone does that, um, let me know about them because I want to have a word with them. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I'm not really sure exactly where it comes from, but it is, yeah, it's this kind of fear of being wrong. I think um, definitely. Again, we've all probably felt it. It's this weird fear that we need to get over. I think. Yeah. August of Canada, I suppose, Katrina August and Prince Akuna Janta. Rogue groups talk with us as a girl. Took some chance there. Hannah to trust her. My own shot. Gaji, Gurfroy to again all school, you probably maybe didn't come across this fear that a lot of people may have coming from a Gaelic area. What was it like for you to see it firsthand, suddenly all like where you you were said kind of said already more expecting this? Yeah, um yeah, it's still the um she she swing in the Niel more over scholar. It. It's like people still just think of it as a school subject and that and that's it. It's kinda of like closed that book when I finish the leaving cert and then somebody s speaks to them on Irish or something and they get flashbacks of Oberbala and Munsari <laughs> and um, um, I think maybe that's it. People don't see it as a living, breathing language, they see it as a school subject. Yeah, it's your okay. Yeah, come on, you catch why. Uh, we have another question here, this gentleman, I think it's hard to see, it is, yeah? 
Lady. It's not Lady, it's, it's very dark. It's extremely dark, it's extremely dark. Yeah, Scar Don't worry about the pronouns. <laughs> Who's going to grammar here? Not me, not me. I have a question for um, the Bailador, the, the Bailador um, So that'll be uh, Oscar and Katrina, yeah. yeah. In, from, your, um, from your perspective, uh, are there words in Irish? Do you, do you think Irish as a language is a, a richer medium for nature and emotions and more expressive than English? From your experience of both languages, would you say which language for you would be a, a better expressor, of, for example, of nature, of, of, of things and feelings of nature? Can you express emotion easier and the feelings of nature in the Irish language <coughs> than English, or better, or di more, or different? Katrina, Um I think I think when you look at like the place names of Ireland and that kind of a thing. There's a, and that, that's kind of one of the things we wanted to show in Grogasagla is the kind of depth of meaning that's there in, in some of the Logan and the the place names. Um, and that definitely shows the kind of um, the diversity in the, the words there are for different things. Also, like I looked up the word, the Irish for the word buttercup the last day, the flower buttercup. <laughs> And there was like a list of like ten different ways to say it in in Irish, which was kind of surprising to me. Um, and yeah, I think in certain ways there is. And um, apparently there's something like forty words for rain or something as well. I'm not too sure about that, but I think I read that in Mother Folklore. Um, so in in certain ways, I think maybe maybe there is. Yeah. Oscar, is it the language of love? Well, Dumsa and Kedor at Minio Grodum, Minio Domei and Eilgilek, and Kedor at Minio Cordestum, Minio Domei and Eilgilek. So the first time love, friendship, and all of these things were described to me, they were described to me in Irish. So subjectively, yes, for me, it means more. Does that mean that that's out of reach for people who take it as a second language? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think that. We're surrounded every day, like, you know, when we go out on the street, you look right or left and there'll be Irish written somewhere in some way, shape or form. I think it's there all the time. And, and, and in the, in the Logan as well, there's a description of the place that has, is very much lost when it's translated into, or when it's been yeah, anglicised. August Tostair, August Tishkin's material of foil, it's the Logan and And that's available to everybody, regardless of whether it was your, your first language or not. So uh, I think it's a very subjective, and like I, I think it's a very subjective question or answer. But like, uh, yeah. Uh, so for me, yes. For other people, possibly. Um, I just wouldn't mind jumping in on that as well, just in relation to what you mentioned about uh, feelings. Um, so I think it's really interesting the way we talk about emotions in our Irish. We say like or um, I am sad. That's, so in English, I am sad. Um, but the way we talk about it, the, the kind of verb or the, the use, the, the sentence structure, it will be the same way we say talk yanzi or um, so I'm wearing a jumper. It's the same sentence structure. It's kind of like you're wearing the feeling. So in terms of mental health, I think in English, yes. you become the emotion. So I am happy. I am sad. But in Irish, you can take it off. So it's, it does, you don't become that emotion. It's not part of who you are. It's just what you're feeling in that time. And it doesn't, it doesn't encapsulate you. So I think I, I'm a true believer in, in kind of different ways of looking at realities from different languages. So each language gives you a different option to look at, at reality. So I think ling, English sometimes limits us in the way we talk about our emotions and our feelings. The, the poet urim is something I usually say after a pop up girl. Yeah, so poet is, is hangover. So the poet urim is there's a hangover upon me. Or, yeah. So, but like, you know, so as Garadine said, it's okay, it'll pass. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a really interesting point. Just learning, mul you know, multiple languages in general can change your perspective or how you see things. And I don't, my level of Irish isn't that good to know all the deep meanings. But um, one thing I really like is to say I'm bored in Irish, you have to say I'm boring myself. <laughs> <laughs> 
actually. Yeah. But I just think it's a really, you know, if you are bored, you probably are just boring yourself. It's your fault. Yeah, it's your fault. Sorry, no. It's no one else's responsibility. So. Yeah. It's very true. And actually, I have to say, from coming from, I remember I studied science, geography, the rest in English for many years, and suddenly it's in Irish. It really helped me. The phrasing and the vocabulary in Irish was actually a lot easier than English because it really described what the word meant. You know, even looking at geography, Chiro, the, the, you know, the science of a country, like it was. that's one example of how so many of the big, hard English terms were actually, I was able to grasp them much easier through Irish. So that really was the advantage to me that I found. Do you mind if I just jump in there for a second? Like I, I witness it pop up a lot, people talking in Irish, not about Irish, but about other subjects. And when they're talking about other subjects in a language that is not their first language, it means that they have to think a little yeah. bit more about the words that they use. And so much discourse these days, words become poisonous and words have hidden meaning to them. So sometimes by using another language, a second or, or a third language or whatever, you rid yourself of the taboos or whatever connected to those words. And conversations become a lot more uh, purposeful or, or like people, people concentrate a lot more on what they're saying because they have to construct the sentence in a much more careful way because they're thinking about it. So I think that that, uh, and as you say, it's just using another language to describe the same thing is, is healthy for the soul. Yep, into that. We have one or two more from the audience. There's a few online coming in too. Uh, to la to Farron Shaw, oh, yeah, just. Er er yeah, Farron. <laughs> it's getting a bit awkward up here. Yes, please, please, tell me, I, I teach Irish and current as adults. Many of them come back and say, I wish I learned it in school. Um, one of the questions I get asked about is about your relationships in family, husbands and wife. In English, a husband is kind of a, it's a proprietary term. Whereas as well, you have a fair tail of this band there. Yeah. He's a together man and a together woman. Yeah. Like it's not covering me a flood in his death shop. It's more equality involved. And he's PC, yeah. And yeah. He's a PC. <laughs> and you'll share the case of Lintus, it's the Shan Sutton Kelta, in old Celtic society. Females had the exact same power and weight as males. There was no um, gender differentiation at all. Whereas the way that keeps that together, your fair tail and your band tail, you're totally equal. We had this equality thing long before the... the there you are, yeah. So, Ahead of our times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Punch of Simul, yeah, Punch of Simul. Um, just actually to part a better, just for people who are watching as well, we were just talking about how uh, the use of the terms fire-kated and ban are much more inclusive that, than it would be in the English vocabulary. So um, that was just an example of uh, another advantageous Irish Irish um, aspect. We might take one, was one up here yourself, I think, yeah, to him. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess, you know, you're talking about finding an opportunity or a way to use Irish language, the Irish language, and I guess for a lot of us non-native speakers, often it's going abroad and, you know, using it there. Um, and I guess, you know, you, you say that you weren't in Austin, I suppose, during the screening, but I was wondering if you've gotten any interesting, I suppose, feedback from those screenings, not just in the States, but like in, in, in other places that the documentary has <coughs> been, because it's, 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 it's amazing that it's um, been received so well, with, even without you guys as proponents over there of it. So just if there's, there's kind of any interesting stories. So Katrina on, yeah, what was it? So you brought the, the film to Austin, uh, which, well, last year I think that happened, was it 2017? This year. Oh, it was this year, this year. So, in some countries that I really live on, what was it like for an American audience? What was the reception like? Well, we weren't go? there. We didn't. We didn't, didn't go. No, we didn't get to go to any of the international screenings except it was in the Luxembourg one. Okay. And it's in the um, it's in the Irish. Cheap lights, right there. It's in the Irish Film Festival in London actually this Friday. Wow. Um, and it won a Best International Film Award. Um at a Culture and Diversity Film Festival in California and at Austin Indie Fest in Austin, <laughs> Texas. And I suppose, yeah, we weren't there to see the reactions, but um, just the fact that it kind of, um, it was so well received over there is, is really cool, it's really nice to hear. And that was um, an intention in making, in making the film. Um, those few um, kind of information information cards at the start um, were to set it up for an international audience because um, Irish is one of the many minority languages in the world and so um, I wanted to make a film that wasn't just kind of about 
Irish, but about minority languages and people using minority languages and the efforts that people are making to keep keep these languages alive. But any anyway, veto to Luxembourg. You were in Luxembourg for the That's screening. That's right, Vito. I was in Luxembourg. <laughs> living your best life. Living your best life. It's quite a thrill. Yeah. Right, right. I can imagine. No. So what was it like? What was the reset? Did you get a chance to talk to people after? Um, yeah, I think actually, and I've said it a a couple of times already it, it resonates with anyone who has experience of speaking a second language so just that you know other people say that they've had similar experiences even if it's not Irish that they've spoken but you know a different language um, like it would it's interesting I have, and actually a lot to be honest a lot of the Luxembourg crowd were the Irish community okay in in Ireland so I mean it does show how there there's a quite a vibrant Irish community in all of these places that it attracts people but it would be interesting like I don't know I mean I don't know if we can capture it now but if there's anyone in the audience who's not from Ireland and doesn't have experience like what their reaction was to it I might actually just ask is anyone here who are not are we do it yourself yeah, yes where are you from, I'm from the United States, United States. Yeah. very welcome <laughs> I want to. and what did you think of the documentary this evening I really, really enjoyed it. As somebody who will like pull out Duolingo on the Lewis in the morning just to pick up a few words, and also like all in conversations with one gentleman at work with Swan, like anything I can pick up and learn and experience and expose myself to in Irish, I really appreciate that opportunity. And it's amazing, like Tatoon Shaw, that you're on your holidays, I'm presuming. No, I'm on a working holiday visa here, so I've been at St. Vincent de Paul. And so I've had some experience working with uh, communities out in the West, and I even got one spam email in Irish last week, which was astounding. Oh yeah, that, that's going round actually. And it's not bad Irish either, isn't it? Not? <laughs> Google Translate is getting really, really good. Um, so yeah, so that so you've seen the documentary. You've, you've come here. You, what what motivated you to come here tonight to attend this event? And so my colleague. Um, so you were made to come. I get it. Yeah. That's my sister. Oh, it's your sister. <laughs> so this is that's not quite totally not. <laughs> Are you having a good night? <laughs> no, you obviously you've been, you have an interest in Irish language. Yep. Okay, great. Well, hopefully that'll continue tonight. And you want to say no, something? No. Is there something about how Irish and Duolingo is like one of the most learned languages? I mean, I'm making up a fact now, but <laughs> there's like. There's like million people learning on That's which is huge. insane. I don't know how active they're learning. They don't give that when they give the little like uh, chatty owl who's like, there's six million people. They don't tell you if they're like learning it every day. They just day. press the go button at the beginning yeah. of the free trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it yeah, shows yeah. that the interest in yeah, Irish exactly. language is there. There you go. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, there was someone else beside you. Are you all linked, yeah? Are you, are you separate? Yeah. Okay, actually, and I'm going to ask, and Chastity too, would you mind standing up to just for the camera? Oh. Oh, I know. I know, right? I know, right? Nah. Uh. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Claudia. And where are you from? Venezuela. Venezuela? Okay, tell us about your experience with Irish language. Uh, well, practically none. Um, I mean, I think this has been the most immersive experience okay. I had. Although we lived in Galway before, my husband and I, and we went to Connemara a lot. Um, We've lived in several different countries around the world, so I really connected with the film because a lot of that experience is my own experience. Uh, I guess my native language is not even English, it's Spanish. But I've lived in Brazil, who speak Portuguese, I've lived temporarily in France, and that fear is a common thing okay. for myself or you know, any other language that you try to speak. So yeah, I think it connects to you. Um, any foreigner um, learning the second language. Okay. I guess it's good to hear too, guys. You know, it's not, you know, it's, it's a universal issue, I guess, this whole conflict with different languages. Thanks for your point. Thank you very much. Then your Biela, he's in Shin, we can Shin. We might have time for one or two more. Yeah, I see a person there. I'm not going to say it anymore. Yeah, I see a head. I had a thing anyone said about me in a long time. And would you stand up there, please, just for the camera? Um, yeah, it's just that the film touched on uh, quite a few things. And I'm Welsh by birth, and I speak a little bit of Welsh. And I'm trying to learn Irish, not particularly well, but, but there's, yeah, it's the embarrassment thing. It's, um, there's the Welsh actor, Viz Evans. He, one of his first TV things was that he did a comedy series where he was a character from Manchester learning Welsh. He was, <laughs> he was a grammar Nazi. 
I'm, I've met so many of them. Like, uh, even native Welsh speakers, I know guys who, once they get out of the comfort zone, they just can't speak Welsh. It's bizarre, it's really yeah. weird. I had, when I was in college, there was a guy who was English. He worked in a power plant, or built in constructing a power plant, returned to Birmingham, returned back to Wales, because they said, well, the job you were doing is available again. <coughs> he uh, learned Welsh because, in his own way, he moved to France, he learned French. His children went to a Welsh language school. His wife was Welsh. His in laws were Welsh, and everyone around him was Welsh. <coughs> and he was doing his degree for the medium of Welsh, which a guy next door to me, a native Welsh speaker, actually said, well, I have the confidence to do that. Mm -hmm. This was a guy who spoke Welsh all day, every day. It was his primary means of communication, and yet he didn't have confidence to do academic mm -hmm. Welsh. And it was really weird. But it's the whole thing of confidence is. I mean, I'm horrible at languages, but again, that's confidence. Mm -hmm. But I, I challenge that because maybe you're not horrible at languages. Maybe you're exactly the same as every single yeah. person. And we just assume that everyone is better than us. The amount of conversations I've had with people, like we've had an initial encounter, a few discussions, and we're speaking in Irish. And then as we get to know each other better, we both admit to each other that we were scared to talk to them in the first place because their Irish was going to be so much better. And the other person says the exact same thing back to me. You know, and like we do, we assume, we think that our level is terrible. We think that our language is terrible, that we can't learn languages. But actually, that's probably just what the process of learning a language is like for everyone. Mm -hmm. Ask you to agree with that? Care for get the hundred percent. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I yeah. think uh, like the, the the lady from Venezuela like touched on it as well. It's like learning languages is hard. It's yeah. not easy. Yeah. Uh, immersion is required yeah. to learn a language well. You're here. The absence of an immersive environment means that it's exceptionally it's hard. Yeah. And we should stop being that hard on ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, find opportunities for immersion wherever they are and and seize them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I I, I don't think and like and I think any of the international people here are probably going. Why are the Irish so worried about this? Of course, uh, of course it's hard it's to learn. Grand. It's, hard. Like, it's like, of course it's hard to learn. And yeah. we think there's kind of, there's, what's the opposite of exceptionalism like? It's like we actually think we're rubbish like, and, and yeah. we're probably not. We're just the same as everybody else. There's nothing intrinsic about the Irish language that makes it harder to learn. No. Um, in, in terms of in, in, in intrinsic like difficulty in terms of grammar, like Erodine said, in many cases it might be easier. So it's it's like let's not be so hard on ourselves. Yeah. Find opportunities, and kind of congratulate ourselves when we, you know, uh, move forward with it. Yeah. Like, you know. And even the ugly part of style that we talked about a lot tonight, they're working through a knock fake, and we have Venezuela, we have United States, and probably other cultures in the audience too, and they're here for their love of the Irish language, mm -hmm. not their native language. So I mean, that's really hopeful, a positive, a positive. Uh, fact, Caroline. Yeah, no, I totally agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I, I work in academia and we talk a lot about um, imposter syndrome. And I think that's definitely something that mm -hmm. Irish speakers have. We're all like, oh, I'm the worst Irish speaker ever. Mm -hmm. And like, no one thinks that about you. Um, and I, I, I do find that a lot, that I'll be speaking to somebody that I know in Irish and I'll be listening to their Irish and I'll be saying, oh my God, they have a, <coughs> they have a blast all in Irish. Like, I'm so envious of their Irish. And they're thinking the exact same about me, which is so weird, but no one says it to each other. Um, I, like I, I said, I work in academia. My supervisor is, her first language is Irish. And when we met each other, we both knew that we had Irish, but we were just both too terrified to speak Irish to each other because I was thinking she's going to correct my Irish because she's a native speaker. And she was thinking she's going to correct my Irish because she has a degree in Irish. And neither of us were going to do that, but there's just this weird fear that, again, it's exasperated in the academic field. But I, I do think that that's probably part of learning languages that we'd all just be a bit kinder to each other and maybe yeah. we might be okay with learning languages together. Yeah. Good okay. But very much as Amit and Drakur to Amog from your Kesh Wainella on earlier. Probably it's time for one more question from the floor and we wrap it up from the online. Uh yourself, yes. Um Eric, haven't you feel like like there's a taboo on version? Like and there's confidence in like I remember <clears throat> I went to the gas like I was fifty and I was like, you know what? I'm sick of being embarrassed and I'm just gonna go in. Like great Irish. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was my first week speaking fluent Irish, and people were coming up to me saying, Oh, like, is this your third year in the Delta? Like, you were around. I was like, No, I just had myself. I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Comes in handy, like, yeah. yeah. The best thing ever, but I feel like people, obviously, I was just lucky enough to have that confidence to be like, Yeah. But, like, 
like is it I know it's harder like immersion is like really important but like are there tips for people who can't immerse themselves like I can't just go away for three months to get a very good question, yeah. I have one tip. Like, uh, I, uh, I, yeah, well, I have a few tips. Pop up, give that next year's next Thursday. Yeah. 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 But like, you know, not everybody wants to go and get hammered. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there's a, there's a, there's a podcast that RTE have um, called Bjor Egan, and it it features uh, three uh, three bosses, three three ladies, like, and they have three different uh, teen or three uh, three different uh, dialects. <coughs> And it's like you can kind of like, and, and because the conversations are just normal social conversations about normal things, they stuff will be repeated in the three different dialects. So you can kind of find your gateway dialect. My wife prefers the uh, the, the Ulster dialect. Unfortunately, she married a lad with Connemara Irish, but it's it's like so different people have different gateways into in, into the language. Like, and I'd say if in the absence of immersion, just listen to it, like radio. Constantly podcasts, constantly just listen to it, listen to it, listen to it, um, and then and then of course the next step is finding opportunities to speak it. There are uh, there's there's an Irish language club on Harcourt Street that you can go and speak Irish in. There are pop up Gaeltachtí. There is uh, the the uh, the Gaeloga. There are plenty of opportunities, but you need to go and yeah. find it. But and sorry, go on. Katrina, yeah. Um, just to add to that, I would say to kind of um, if you know. Gwaelgors, if you know people who are fluent, just be a bit adamant about speaking it because I know from my perspective, I know a lot of people and myself and Aina met through Gwael Nagalyeva, the football team that she mentioned and um, that's a great way to kind of um, learn because everybody is kind of like making making the effort to speak the language um, at the training sessions but also like through that I've met so many people who I who I already knew in my regular life but I'd always speak to them in English by habit by default and um, because of that because of being put in that situation together I started speaking to those people um, in Irish and um, kind of through Grogus Agla and different things, people have kind of um, seen me now as a person they can kind of give their cup of vocal a, a go with and I'm not going to like, um, I'm not going to embarrass them or whatever, I'm not going to laugh in their face. And I've been amazed by how many more people have kind of just switched, made that switch from speaking English to me to speaking Irish. Um, and that's been really interesting because I think um, you think sometimes that you're forcing it on somebody. Do you know? Like I kind of, it is a, it is a funny kind of balance when you are an Irish speaker um, and you don't know whether to, to whether to keep a conversation going in Irish or in English because you don't know what the other person, what the other person would prefer, and you don't want to feel like you're kind of. Um, forcing them to speak in Irish or something, or if they're not comfortable with it, or, you know, so. I, I'll just say for myself, as I started my immersion, I kind of graded it as well. So I found one, like I identified one friend who I trusted and was comfortable with. And I we would we would just say one, we'd have one sound bite in Irish a day. So, you know, one part of our conversation was in Irish and then we'd speak in English. And then because my confidence was building, then our level of Irish would grow after that. And I started talking to more people. Yeah. I think, um, sorry, um, I think, uh, uh, like you were saying, you, you pretended that you had the confidence to speak Irish. Yeah, just a general life advice, fake it until you make it. Like, just go with it. Pretend that you have the confidence of, of somebody who speaks Irish because we're all secretly terrified in every aspect of life. So just go just go with it. Um, and like like I said before, if somebody's correcting you on it, go with it with a nicer person who's not correcting you on it. Oscar. Uh, and I, it's sometimes uh, pop up that people ask us, like, can I go if I can't speak Irish? Now, the I can't speak Irish is usually a bit of a lie. They usually can, to some extent. But what, we, what I say to them is like, and especially maybe friends of mine who I know in the English language world as opposed to the Irish language world, I say, come on in, you know. And, and when they're there or they're meeting me for a pint, they're like, they don't want me to stop speaking Irish. They're perfectly happy, and I'm perfectly happy for them to continue speaking English. I'll continue speaking in Irish. And there's no problem, yeah. like, it's absolutely fine. Nobody's taking offence from, e from, from, from it. No. As long as, you know, you stay at the start, look, listen, I'd prefer if you kept speaking in Irish. Is that okay? And you're like, yeah, no problem, no bother. Most people, most native speakers, most Irish speakers are well used to those interactions, and all you have to do is ask, and yeah. we'd be perfectly happy to do it.
just one because people always say oh, i understand irish but i can't speak it but no that's the start of language acquisition is to understand it first yeah. and then you can do, you can you do know how to speak it you just have to practice that's it exactly um guys we're going to leave it there from you guys tonight there's one that's come in online and I, it's actually nice to finish on uh which is i'm going to ask each of you this smart uncle skirt and it's from dan Hegarty, and he says uh, he wants to know what is the greatest gift the irish language has given you i think that's a nice positive note to end with um just lara foster to Kearney Anacon Hasten Shin, an Astro or an Illa Atente uh, influencer in the nail, Tashi Eric uh, Teve Stature, Tashi and Shin, basically, yeah. August Tashi and Dana doing Egg and Jerry's going to get, she's going to um, sing us, we're not going to sing here, are you? You might. We'll see. He's going to say us out. But we're Mila 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 Mai Ogusha, V and Shog, V Bial and Workman, Sakrina Ogusha Sawala, V Gurkarin, Air Facebook, August Ass Upward, Chat with Rafad, August and Panel for my So, Marshall, the the greatest gift that Irish Language has ever given you. It's also glad to on you. Amazing new friends. Beautiful. Oscar. Karati Limafashti. Conversation. He's Cheshireish. Garrity, top that. Good luck. I feel foster, big um, of my identity, it's who I am. Yeah, it's pretty good. Katrina? Um, I think having two languages means you kind of, you have a, a deeper depth of understanding about about the world and communication and different languages. So. There you go, speech of appreciation for Anya Gallagher, Oscar O'Keefe, Gareth McAvoy, and Kim Coyne. Speech of Kira, Denim Philly of the Merle, August and Melga. So I write poetry in Irish and in English. I run a spoken word night in Dublin called REC, or E I C, um, and it's on around every month. It's Fader I'm Shu, Air Facebook, August Twitter, August Gachrod, Marshin. Um, okay, so I'm Fader Shasab and Show? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So my first poem is called Phenomenal Woman, and it's bilingual, so if you're from Ireland, you probably understand all of it, because as we've heard, you all know more than you let on. <laughs> Kunis is Faderlum Kershius a yen of Erhi. She wears many hats, August Galore, Perry Brogi, Jifor, Inin, Maher, Ultra, Muntor, Banon T. She's a pilot, a doctor, an engineer. She's whatever she wants to be. Phenomenal woman, Shin E. Ismo ban in Isha Awan, Pelador, Kliha every Sunday, a gimmert er son the man, er son a kunte, er a son fain. She's a hun, a gimmert er the hun, dinna than akma or Pelladori, goshkiacha, lekkiacha. She's a ten, a knockout, dernali, lagt her e gachla, agis fos, Irene she. She's Katie Taylor, champion no horpa, champion on Dowen. It's more on sport e, it's leer more sport e. Ta cosa intacha eki, it's intach on cosentor e. Nihain inu, it's ban e. She's an expert at deflecting unwanted attention, perfecting the art of rejecting without collecting enemies. Ban Guno, a gober loon gehina for the man. Ten hours a day in a glass box with a pack of jocks who communicate chiefly in locker room talk. She tunes it out, works hard round the clock. Call her bossy if you want. She'll soon be the boss. She's a fast woman. A grave suis naparka, no surprise. She's been running all her life from stereotypes following from ancient times, ingrained in even her own mind. Ach fuyera anish, ni rihin she ahila. She tackles those stereotypes head on. Dare she, Tom Buinen, ach ni buinen she shin diem, quarren she lum. It's lu classy may le passion, August ni hainum gur spatialum fashion. There's nothing wrong with being bottle blonde. Painting your nails doesn't make your arms less strong. I am all you can imagine and more beyond. On rud nach fader, ni fader e. Bin adoru lehi tra, nervishi giri den vamak on rev ain valakis jach aundi gushana club navar. On rud nach fader, Ni fader e. Ach tashisha ko kru a leshen nimont, sen anya er a love. Ihinta ischi madna kalua, jigrus la nunach, buwe on dua. Horse she son arak, agus buin he she son or. She's overcoming hurdles like Dervo O'Rourke. She's Stephanie Roach kicking goals going viral. She's on the hockey team in the World Cup final. 
And I stand in awe of all Mana like her. I thought I'd toggle a Mali Hain and paving the way. On Rud, Narv Eider Tra, Is Fader Anish A. Fech Erhi, Is Fader A. I'm going to do one more poem. Um, it's about falling in love with a video on the internet. It's called On Nota Einer. It's a true story. On Nota Einer, on Heid Khan Achulame Wet Riv, Evishan Erd on Idelin, Klushim Anishay, on Heid Nota Achulame Wet Riv. Nur a horme danum san in ol cordig, is na turhi de cordias, good your gahanig may er gach alt fuckle litter lat, gach pictor diet, is son shin a chunic may, and shanna isham diet, and nota ainer, tigamanish, be tus on rudder a lege, and nota ainer, is na noti a lan, is na tracht and a fog hella tussa a vulla, a trachtery temple, the crina, shanna hafida. Vitu Ahraha, a carawis nor a renew on Taffid. Sit to art egan in AD Skulla, sit to is skull egan, sit to art egan, sit to sata is tossa art egan. It's on Fishan a hafada, on Fishan a jucking air, on Fishan arve tus on rudder a lege, carawis nor a leg to us it, on nota ainershin. Hatten to lesha gamera, a gsvarti maker hatten to lum. Vartig me gemefalum da mech ein ahna agaturum. Vartig me gemefalum da mech ein shansagum. Bulum, a hussa fihiblino hin. Brishi me tridum skalon, leve sushomer shin. Leve lat, a rash lat, a rash sushomer shin. Sushomer in the row to. Sushomer in the will to. Sushomer in the might to good joe. Bulum, a hussa fit a blino hin, creep nig tauron, fonerum treed in the blinta, is bully my lat, a derum, leshen scalon, leshen vishon, lat, bully my lat, not in ish, is bully my lat, a gown fit a blin. Achni feder, let a hyana hishon hain, may a chlushstal. Vratnik may er in Vishon shin er fai raha suller higme, nak fader bre er am is nak fader elu way. Agus ta the hail sail ta agotanish, gone me, ban agus chak agus clan, gone me. Ach, on nota einer shin, on kade kyan a chulame wet, reeve. Clusham eh.